Hello, everybody. Good morning. Happy Saturday. Welcome to the Victory Road World Cup of Pokemon VGC, sponsored by Elgato, GG Tour, and Metaphy. My name is Mabel Work. I am here with Kano Johnson and Kano. You and I had a very good time at Worlds, but I have been missing getting back at the casting desk for World Cup. Yeah, it's been a great little break to have, you know, with Worlds and coming, of course, over to the Atlantic to the UK, but. It's just nice to have a like, sit down and get behind that casting desk and just enjoy the fun that is of talking over games and seeing even more Pokemon content when a lot of us, you know, thought it was all over after seeing Edu being crowned the champion a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, absolutely. It has been an absolute blast, right? I've just been, after watching Worlds and seeing all of the exciting matches, I was just itching to get back into the seat and get to get back on camera with you guys. But if you guys are looking to keep up with all of the World Cup action, there are plenty of ways to do so with all of the social medias through Victory Road. You can follow us on Twitter at VGC Victory Road. That's where you guys will see updates from every single match that we post throughout the day and any updates on our uh, on the streams as well. YouTube, where we upload all of these matches, plus extra matches that you guys will not see streams throughout the week twitch right now where you guys are here but if you also want to follow along with everything as it's going on we also have the the discord for the world cup this season so you know it's i'm just i'm so excited i literally i was like i could not sleep last night with how how stoked i am to be back on the desk uh with with you guys here and it was you know super fun for all of us i think and being able to come back now for the uh for the playoffs at this point now that uh now that worlds has now passed is going to give us a lot of really exciting matches for the day <laughs> Yeah, it's always going to be really fun and exciting, as you said. And of course, there's also that a bit of money on the end as well, just to try and, you know, give a little bit of an incentive. So, yes, maybe some of these players might not have got that world champion crown, but they can also get that crown of their team, of the world champions of Victory Road, and also, you know, get a bit of money across them as well, which, you know, it's a little bit of happiness. Maybe players couldn't maybe make it to Worlds or maybe just thought, you know, didn't do too good at Worlds, but I'll give it that extra little shot for the, pr the pride of their country. Yeah, there's definitely, you know, nobody's going to be upset when there's a little bit of money on the line that you have a chance to win here. Uh, taking a look at our top 16 bracket, this was shown during the stream yesterday, but for those of you guys just tuning in, you can see a lot of really interesting matches. I think the one that obviously stands out to, I think, most of us is Italy and France, that rematch from last year. Um, and they had, you know, that was such an interesting week, I think, for a lot of us. Um, you know, there's still a lot of, I think, South Korea and Brazil, also a rematch. They faced each other in top 16 and Korea won, so that's another one to be paying attention attention to we'll be featuring matches today from canada and taiwan from the netherlands and the united states from south korea and brazil and from japan and thailand so quite a lot of really interesting matches that we'll get to see even the first two matches are both from that same bracket both canada and taiwan so it'll be nice i think to get two in a row from the same team to kind of see how those teams are working together a lot of the great reasons for a nice team structure for a world cup tournament is that you get to see a lot of really interesting team building and just kind of the way that a team works in general right because you've got a manager that will you know put their best foot forward into helping to guide a team in the right direction and when you're at such a high level of play like the playoffs for world cup because these guys have gone through many many weeks of matches already um to get to this point so they they've definitely kind of proven their merit here especially and there's a lot of pokemon that they've played so i think every bit of experience from everyone on the team always is great to have a collaborative effort uh you know especially within team building yeah, and team building is something that's going to be very crucial in these tournaments, whether that be scouting a team or picking a team you're going to play with, especially when these players aren't going to want to, aren't going to face each other normally, especially with the detachment of places like China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, from the TPCI to TPC circuit. Means, you know, these can these Canada players aren't going to be facing these same sort of teams. They have to kind of think what the Asian style of team building is, which is often very, very powerful, very in your face. Like I'm going to do damage, or just going to sit back and stall until the very end of the game, and then just do as much damage as possible. Which is going to be very great for, of course, these teams like Japan and Thailand coming up against each other, especially because a lot of the players from these teams are the ones who are on the map. A lot of these countries can maybe f figure out, you know, I can play maybe lesser known players and catch them out like a little snake in the grass. But sometimes these smaller condensed countries have to go with those players that are well known. So picking out a team building style that they will go with naturally can help these teams as well. But it's still going to be a little bit of a shock of having to scout for every minuscule piece of data. 
Yeah, especially, right? There's a lot of interesting scouting that goes on between these teams. Like you said, with the with the teams that are not exactly in the same circuit, there's sometimes a little bit of an information disconnect. And a nice thing about World Cup is we get to see some of these really funky teams, like, like you did say. And, you know, if we, if we want to take a look, too, between Canada and Taiwan and get a kind of a feel here, Canada's already up 2-1 against Taiwan. So in theory, if Canada wins both of their matches today, they've moved on to top. Uh, they've moved on to, or they're close to moving on to the top eight. So it's, you know, at this point, Taiwan definitely wants to try and keep pace. Um, they, you know, it's, it's, it's become a little bit tougher, right? Kind of moving forward, trying to put your best foot forward to put yourself as far up in the position. But both of these teams, they're both new to this stage of the tournament. They did not make it to top 16 in last year's World Cup. So it's already a huge accomplishment for all of these players to have made it this far in the competition. And, you know, at, at this point as well, we're seeing a lot of teams that, to me, look very familiar. I think the one thing I'm seeing in Araquan and Alolan Persian, which is uh, kind of harkening back a little bit to 2019 in a way for me but it's still interesting to kind of see how those pokemon that had such an interesting slot to fill back in the ultra series and you know sun ultra and moon series days back in 2019 how those can kind of slot onto a team in uh series 12 and you know as series 12 is kind of hearkening through its glory uh its final days here it's interesting to see how these players are kind of finding still some kind of funky things to add to a team to help give them success moving forward yeah, and sometimes finding those little funky little nit bits that you can use to go forward can be that little bit of pressure that pushes you forward or a bit of skill that pushes you forward. Of course, again, Canada having to kind of think, you know, Taiwan are going to bring these Pokemon that are a bit funky, are a bit different, so it can maybe have to go with a super standard team that has pretty much coverage for everything. But at the same time, Taiwan could do be doing the reverse, and those small changes could be changed for a whole team, maybe not just a certain Pokemon. Of course, that Raconid helps very well with Trick Room. We know that Lunala can carry Trick room quite a lot but also it's got a really nice special bulk so against things like Kyogre where it's going to be hitting with a neutral-ish damage it's going to be taking very good hits and I've seen how much a liquidation can do in a rain to a Kyogre and that is very scary coming from Rakunid so something will have to be respected there and then the Persian as you said is kind of floated around was kind of here and back in 2019 it's basically like a mini Incineroar but without the, <laughs> without the fire typing a little bit of speed yeah, it's it's one of those Pokemon that I used back in 2019, so it, it feels a little familiar to me, you know, even having Parting Shot back then when, you know, moving, trying to trying to find a couple of different options here, but are, they are very interesting teams, but, you know, even moving forward, looking at the players for our very first match, as we can kind of start to get a, a feel for what we're going to be seeing, Neil Patel from Canada, Victory Road, Road to Frankfurt, Top 16 this year, competed in World Cup last year, and was part of the World Cup Open Top 32 of last year as well, uh, Chiai Chi Chen uh, from Taiwan is one of the Taiwan Nationals top eight of this year. Asia Players Cup um, Taiwan qualifier top four. So incredibly good accomplishments there, both online and in person. So definitely something that you don't want to shake a stick at playing. Like it doesn't see, you know, the list seems short, but it's a very impressive list. And both of these players have the experience as well from playing, especially having uh, you know prior prior experience in the game especially in a format like this is really helpful in a team format like this yeah it's really helpful and of course from the taiwan perspective you know this sort of format of best of three is very different to what they usually experience again they normally experience maybe a best of one theme format so having stamina as both a team and a player to come through to these high performances as as a team and as both and like in singular events is quite good a quite a good feat which neil shouldn't really shake a stick at because you know going from best of one to best of three is a big change and can be something that players who can transition well are good to catch out on but saying to catch out on we can see the teams are kind of polar opposites that like to catch each other mm -hmm. out all the time with the ever so lucky and ever so common rinya sun with that gasha john that's going to really frighten the koga on the opposing side of the field from from chia chi yeah, absolutely. Right. Both of these teams kind of feel very quintessential Series 12. Neil, like you said, running that Rinne Sun, but uh, Chiachi running the Kyogre Zacian Swordfish that we've seen so many times with Amoongus, Thunderous, Landorus, and Kartana. So, um, or sorry, Tornadus there, not Thunderous. But, you know, it's still interesting to see kind of that Tornogre uh, com combination that kind of didn't see too much of throughout a lot of Series 12 in a way that I thought we would. Thunderous kind of being the more common of the three. Uh, 
genies to kind of get thrown on those team compositions there. Landers, of course, so, so strong, so, so tough to deal with, but I feel like Cartana is the player for Chiachi that is going to have to make a big show of getting rid of that Gastrodon and allow that Kyogre to sit really comfortably. And there it is in that lead, the Kyogre and the Cartana with Zacian and Incineroar on the opposite side. Yeah, so a very strong lead from both players going with one of their restricted straight away, just maybe thinking get as much damage out as possible. Of course, Chia Chi is kind of scared that Gastron could come in that lead or even in that back, but Kartana being there just scares it even more. There's an Intimidate drop from the Incineroar, but you see a White Herb activate though, so that's going to make it go straight back to how stats were. And Gastron now has less of a chance of switching in on either of slots if Chia Chi calls the switch right but still feels a little bit safe going in there. And I believe I did just see a very unique move there on the Zashin moveset. I difficult that as well, Maeve. I think that was a Solar Blade. Solar Blade Zashin was what I used on Rinya Sun in NAIC this year. It did not serve me very well, but I am hoping it serves Neil far better than I. It was a super fun move, able to one-shot that Kyogre when it's not in that Dynamax. And this Kyogre definitely wants to stay in the rain with its partner Kartana next to it, because Kartana facing down an Incineroar is not going to love taking a Flare Blitz. Having the opportunity to max is definitely really helpful. You can at least, you know, maybe try and take some uh, big damage and some big shots onto that uh, Zashin on the opposite side of the field however you're still not comfy with this incineroar and if incineroar switches out into something like the groudon which it does here this groudon is going to make this cartana very uncomfortable in the position that it's in and it's going to force chia chi to go for something like a dynamax maybe pivot out his own kyogre later on in the game looks like a dynamax here though on that side of the field uh you know i think either pokemon is a nice option a max overgrowth from the cartana is still going to do a ton of damage into that slot where the groudon is if you're able to call that switch I think you're going to put yourself in a really nice position to get a good chunk of damage off onto this Pokemon that you know is going to cause you problems. But if you're not expecting that Solar Blade onto your Kyogre slot, you're going to have a lot of problems. Protect, though, a great way to start, just keeping yourself a little bit safer. Yeah, we do see the Solar Blade comes out, and with the activation of the Sun, it is going to go straight away in one turn. Nice new little physical version of the of a Solar Beam, but it doesn't power up. I must have missed a weather switch there. You see a max steel spike goes into the Zashian, does a nice chunk and gets a defense boost to be very beneficial given the power output of these Pokemon on the physical side. And that means that Neil's gonna have to maybe, you know, pivot around and maybe get Incineroar in to try and scare the the Kartana even while those stab flare blitzes, but still, you know, not the end of the world. Because, you know, still very powerful on the side and Kartana, you know, is gonna it can maybe able to take a couple of hits, but still isn't a feat for this action to be scared of. Yeah, it definitely, you know, that Solar Blade went into that Protect on that Kyogre, which was the tough thing there, because now Kyogre now knows that it's in a bad spot, so it definitely wants to sneak out of here. Bring in something for Chia Chi that can handle it a little bit better. Landorus is something that can take a Solar Blade a bit better, but more importantly, getting that Intimidate onto this Sashin, who you now know has this extra coverage move, is a really nice piece of information to hold. Groudon also switching out here, bringing the Incineroar back in, like you said, getting that Intimidate to cycle on their side as well. Just trying to keep these big offensive powers from doing doing as much damage as possible onto the opponents on the other side of the field. But you're still going to be dealing with a lot of damage from a Sacred Sword, even into that Dynamax Kartana. Super effective damage there, but a Max Knuckle to boost your attack after Intimidate, I think is a really great way to continue to move forward. So this Sashin now, not as happy to be sitting in front of this Pokemon that Neil thought he was going to get a good Intimidate out onto. Yeah, getting rid of that Intimidate with a Max Knockout is a very good move there from Chia Chi because, you know, it's a strong move still with that Dynamax, Dynamax factor. So it's going to, you know, if you catch a Zashin on, instead on switch in, maybe expecting it to go into that Zashin slot, it's going to do very well. And even if not, you know, boost is there. You can go for a Max Grass into the Groudon next turn, or you could just maybe start Max Knuckling into where the Incine did come. So really just covering options and getting that attack boost where it is needed. And as you said, Neil is kind of a bit scared now because the Intimidate didn't go as planned as we see switching of the Zashin on the opposing side. So that's going to come in nice and fresh with no drops and, and no boosts going against it. You see the Behemoth Blade coming out from Neil's Zashin. If that goes into that opponent's Zashin, it's going to do a nice chunk. Because the defense boosts aren't on there because of the... the Steel Spike was earlier, doing about 75, maybe about 50%. This Max Knuckle does come out from the Kartana, likely, oh no, going into the Zashin, actually getting a knockout. So the dog will be going down, and we have a plus two, plus one, I believe, if we 
calculate the beast boost as well which is going to be very very scary if neil can't cycle intimidates or get enough flare blitzes down to knock out this kartana before it becomes a bigger threat because the flare blitz does come out and it's going to go down it's a little origami thing and it's going to drop i mean zashian is going to be at low hp in front of a uh uh, Incinero, which could be EV to take some hits, as well as a Groudon coming in, which is probably going to go for a Fire Punch, or even a Press with Blades, if it hits, and, you know, cause some issues there as well. Yeah, so here's the thing with this turn, right? As you're looking at getting the Sashin off of the field, it has this coverage move. You're not able to bring your rain back in as well, thanks to the Kyogre. You're feeling a little bit uncomfortable. You bring the Kyogre in this turn, but your Kyogre is faster, so then you're still making the bet of, is the Groudon on the opposite side going to come in instead of that Gastrodon? So, you know, at least now, getting your own Zashin in, if you have to make the sacrifice for your Kartana in that Dynamax, getting that extra max Knuckle out to boost your own Zashin to plus two is going to be a great way to at least try and get as much damage off onto this Gastrodon, depending on the item that the Kyogre has on the opposite side of the field, if it is something like a choice into an item or, um, you know, maybe even like a life orb, you may be really hesitant to use something like a water pulse if you're trying to deal with this Gastrodon and may have to lock yourself into something like an ice move. Neil, though, still has his Dynamax, and if you are a Gastrodon sitting in front of a plus two Zashin, you are going to try and make it as tough as possible for your Gastrodon to get knocked out and maybe deal with it in a little bit of a better way later. So, you know, you know, I think Landorus coming in here, getting another Intimidate onto this Incineroar is always pretty nice. You're not worrying too much about Fake Out at this point in the, in the game either. However, I think Gastronon coming out, if you were trying to predict something like a Max Quake and switching in that Landorus, I think that's going to be a really nice move to maybe at least stall out one turn of this Dynamax, of this Pokemon that really is threatening and you have lost your main way to take care of it with the Kartana. Yeah, with Kartana being gone in front of a Gastron, which has just gone big, that is going to be very scary. Of course, Gastron, not a Pokemon that often goes for the Dynamax Factor, but that player off is going to do a nice chunk to it, though, which could be a bit scary coming down into the game. The parting shot going to Landorus covers a lot of bases, gets to switch out on the Incineroar, and the Landorus is just a little bit weakened, so maybe if it does go for, a, you know, whatever it goes for, maybe not an Earthquake because the Zashian is next to it. But it could be going for maybe a rock slide just to try and knock out that incinerable we'll get a flinch down where it need where it needs it, which isn't gonna be too necessary when there was a switch and there is a gastrodon coming through. But I have to see what happens though as a max quake will come out. I'm not going for a possible max ice, which could have knocked out the Landorus in one fell swoop and opting to get rid of the Zacian, just getting rid of that dog that is very annoying to the Dynamax Pokemon and all these Pokemon on this team in general which means that it's going to be possibly clean sailing here on out because you can just max ice into that Landorus. You can bring in Incineroar to get away with more attack drops on things. And Neil seems to have just completely changed the flow of the game where he did feel a bit scared of that Kartana going up and is just using the power of Dynamax on Gastrodon to go forward and take the rest of the game. Yeah, and I mean, Kyogre coming in here, you're setting up the rain, which seems really good for this one turn. However, if you're Neil, you have the really easy option of just switching your Groudon out, bringing your Incineroar back in, maybe letting it take that knockout, but then you are able to get that final weather control for the end of the game. You do get an Intimidate also back onto that Landorus, which is really nice as well. Uh, you know, Gastron, like you said, has the opportunity to just go for a Max Hailstorm here as well to change the weather if you want to, and then still have the opportunity to maybe save that switch and bring that Incineroar in later. So if you at least have a couple of different options the nice thing about making this gastrod on your dynamax choice is that you have the opportunity to go for a couple of different uh ways to ch change the weather kyogre protecting here though means that it's not going to be taking damage but this earthquake is the reason why so earthquake from the lander is only going to be hitting into the gastrodon and the groudon you can see how much that intimidate really pays off though onto a pokemon like the uh groudon or onto a pokemon like the lander the precipice blades not hitting either pokemon thanks to the protect and the max hailstorm from this gastrodon onto the the Landorus is still going to do enough damage for a knockout there. Not a full one hit just because of that little bit of damage, but I don't think it mattered all too much by the end of it. And this was a really great way for Neil to wrap up, even when you give up a piece of information that is so nice to have in, the, in your back pocket on turn one. Because by using that Solar Blade right out of the gate, you've immediately given Chia Chi a really interesting piece of information that he now knows he has to play around. And sometimes that's a piece of information you may want to hide for game two or game three. Yeah, and having to just keep it preserved is going to be very scary for Chia Chi because he's got to respect him now. He's got to think, you know, he's not forced to go for a play rough to try and maybe knock out my Kyogre or you know, other Pokemon that maybe not enjoy taking it. 
And of course, you could maybe go into with the Moongus if you, if you can do it, but that is also forcing your Moongus to come, which means that Neil can maybe bring other Pokemon that really pester that Moongus, get rid of that as soon as possible, and that's another slot gone, which Neil can then work around more and more. And just the addition of a, of a particular move and the way it's been revealed, you know, it's such a big mind game as well as just a physical advantage as well. As we see, though, that Chia Chi is kind of, you know, going all cannons are blazing get rid of everything around the gastrodon before getting before dealing with it incineroar isn't going to enjoy that water spot no matter where it comes from and gastrodon is going to be nice and free just to go for a max quake get a spadef boost which is going to be nice for a possible ice beam given it's, it's ground typing meaning it's not going to take it all to well but well enough to a nice chunk as well which may also just you know really put the pressure on chia chi because it's on a timer with the hail with the drops and stats and we could even see earth power spadef drop which can be even scarier. I mean, Neil can get rid of the game even quicker and can also confuse Chia Chi a little bit with maybe damage calcs because that's going to make him think, okay, did the Earth Power have to have that drop to kill or no, did, did it rely on this? Groudon coming in though, pretty much curtains here because it can just go for any of its moves and just have a little bit of a chip battle with its partner Gashadon to see who gets knockout on this Kyogre. Yeah, and this Kyogre is not exactly going to want to use something like this water spout now that the sun's up, even if it is its best option. It doesn't have too much HP left either, so if it's carrying something like that Origin Pulse, that may just be the move that you have to go for. However, it's running Protect, and it's not running something like Life Orb, so I'm assuming it's a Mystic Water variant here. So, you know, it's not able to do as much damage with the Ice Beam as well. Still does a good chunk to the Groudon, but not enough for the Knockout. Shadow Claw is a great move to pretty much bring this game to curtains. Gastrodon going for Yawn here. Also just a nice way to kind of wrap it, right? Because now you've at least got this only one turn left. Kyogre doesn't want to protect this next turn either. Try and stall out some of that uh, sun turns just to maybe give it a better option. But at this point, you have two Pokemon on your side with two moves that can do enough damage. You have to maybe assume that this Kyogre goes for an Ice Beam, gets a crit, and then you have some sort of miss or recover chance. But at this point, I think Gastrodon can just go for something like another Ice Beam, could go for an Earth Power here if it really chose to. And that's going to be enough for this game. So even though the end game looks really close with one Pokemon versus one Pokemon. Neil definitely positioned himself, I think, in a way that uh, paid, you know, really paid off in kind of his play style because, like I said, you're giving away such a big piece of information on turn one, game one, that some players maybe would hide until game two, especially if you've lost in that game one. But I think now at this point, right, Neil understands his big threats. Get rid of the Kartana early, because that's going to be your big way to get your end game locked up, and then possibly try and, you know, either stall or start getting special defense boosts. And I like the way that he saved his Dynamax for the uh, at least the middle to the end of the game. So I think at this point as well, I think that's really going to pay off. But Tornadus here is a nice way to maybe get a little bit more control thanks to that uh, Tailwind if needed. But Charizard as well is going to be a switch up. So both of these trainers bring in completely different leads. Charizard, though, not able to set the sun for that partner Zashin, so there wouldn't be any threat of a solar blade thanks to a G-Max wildfire this turn. Yeah, no threat of solar blade is, you know, you know, is a bit annoying because maybe Chiachi has changed up the lead to try and respect that, but having the Tornadoes and the Landorus there, both the genies, puts a lot of pressure on the side of the field because, you know, Charizard being four times weak to rock isn't going to like a rock slide or possible rock tomb could come from this Landorus. But at the same time, if played right, you know, can go, can maybe could be EV to live certain moves, could maybe be going just for a nice big slap of damage on things where it needs to be and, you know, really get that pivot straight away. Having the ability to chip HP on Kyogre teams really quickly means that, you know, Kyogre's water spouts are doing less and less, means it's forced to go for those really shaky, less accurate origin pulses, which also means that when you bring in your Gastrodon, your Gastrodon's still sitting there safely, like, okay. I can just absorb these boosts and force you into Ice Beam now. But we do see, you know, that the, that the option is is to go with that max. So maybe going straight for that path. Could it also go for an Airstream just to kind of counteract any Tailwinds that come up? But, you know, maybe going for outright damage could be a pace setter. Either or, Neil has the upper hand, given that Intimidate has also dropped down onto the Landorus. Yeah, but two Dynamaxes here with that Gigantamax Charizard being the choice for Neil right out of the gate. And Chia Chi also going for their own Dynamax, that Landorus, who is very happy to face down something like that Charizard on the opposite side of the field. You may still be taking something like a G-Max Wildfire into your Tornadus, but I don't think you're all too worried about it, especially if they're now worried about matching something like a Max Airstream with this Tailwind from the Tornadus coming out on this first turn as well. So at least I think at this point you give yourself a really nice option. Max Quake, though, is the move 
move here. And that targets into the Incineroar, which was that Zacian. And either way, you are not upset about getting a ton of damage, bringing this Incineroar down to its Focus Sash, which is an interesting item on the Rinya Sun team. Oftentimes you see the Shooka Berry instead, or a couple of different items on that Incineroar. But getting the special defense boost, I think, is going to be nice moving forward as well to deal with this Charizard's GMAX Wildfire, kind of help prevent some of the damage. And sending that GMAX Wildfire into the Landorus does very little damage. And I think Chia Chi is off to a pretty good start, even if you're going to be taking some chip damage every single turn for the next several turns. Yeah, Chia Chi really playing it safe and maybe calling, you know, could have been calling Incense Switch or could have just drawing from straight out damage onto the slot that was a Zacian, also getting that special defense boost, which as we can see, has really benefited them because it's meant that the Charizard, which normally does a lot of damage, even with a Dynamax Factor to a Landorus, has just done negligible damage. And is also forcing the Focus Sash on turn one, essentially, onto that Incineroar, which is something that players who run for Sash Incineroar like to keep it for the late game so they can maybe go to the Sash from a Water Spout, pivot out with something like your, with your Parting Shot, and then come back in again, get Intimidates and Fake Outs looping. We do see that, you know, yeah, there's an Icy Wind coming out from yep from the tornado so we didn't there'll be speed drops and a max rockfall coming out as well going into charizard which is gonna just not get a knockout actually so ev to live on that sliver of hp and see how charizard retaliates with its sun act not there anymore and the sand replaced that icy wind miss is huge because that icy wind miss probably was enough to get that last bit of chip damage thanks to the rock but now you've activated the weakness policy and this max airstream from the charizard who did not get the speed drop able to get this tornadus off of the field you still are faster at least than the groudon but now this charizard is trying to match a little bit more uh, you know i think the chip damage is going to be nice but now you don't even have the solar power to add to it thanks to this max, max rock fall so you're still able to hang on here you've got at least one more turn you're you're not running that life orb so you're not getting the life orb chip on top of that which sometimes we've seen weakness policy charizard was something that we saw a lot during worlds this year and it was a it was a pokemon that had a lot of really strong output throughout the entire world championships kyogre coming in those changing the rain gonna reduce the power maybe from this charizard moving forward and make this ground on a little bit less comfortable you've still going you're still going really fast so you can still go for something like a water spout and be really like reasonably very comfortable you're gonna do a ton of damage you know charizard may want to just go for something like a max guard may want to protect on this turn but you still really kind of want to make the most of these dynamax turns right you could maybe try and see if you can get a max airstream up but if you're worried about who's going to be moving first you may just try and boost the speed of your own pokemon if you can avoid getting targeted but i think at this point it becomes a little bit difficult if you're if you're a uh, neil to you know pivot around because if you send something in it's going to probably be that incineroar and that's just going to come in get an intimidate off onto one pokemon that would like to you know that you'd like to get the intimidate off onto but not something like that zashin who you're really kind of hedging your bets to send those intimidates out in front of so getting the intimidate on this landorus will be nice at least for this turn but this landorus i think has really done its job max guard from the charizard not going to be doing a whole lot of damage here uh, to that Pokemon. And then Max Airstream is going to take that last bit of HP off of that Incineroar. Boosting the speed of your own Kyogre, though, it is going to be really nice having that moving forward. Your Kyogre is going to be really comfortable to sit in here if it can. However, weather's going to change once this Groudon comes back in. So you may not feel too comfortable to have your, uh, to have your Kyogre sitting on the field, especially once the sun comes back up. Yeah, the sun coming back in was a very good switch there from Neil, you know, preserving, hoping maybe just knock out the Incineroar guaranteed, get the attach up as well onto Landorus, but like you said, it's kind of done its job and it's just going to be there to just put out damage where it can. It's got its Airstream boost, which is going to be very nice to match the boost from the Charizard's Airstream earlier, especially with the Tailwind still kind of floating about on Chia Chi's side. But, you know, the sun up being up is going to be a bit scary if, you know, the pace is set so you can go for a rock slide and get a nice bit of chip damage. And maybe go for an ice beam just to kind of negate that sun. We see Zashin actually came in. I ever so sorry. I did not catch that. So Zashin coming in, you know, is a bit annoying for both these Pokemon. You know, we could see maybe a Groudon switch in just to preserve the Charizard or to maybe preserve the Zashin as well. But Ivory's Pokemon are happy to switch in front in the face of this Kyogre, of course, Solar Blade was a little thing that Neil was hovering over. It's something that Chia Chi ha has to respect because, you know, thinking, you know, if, if he switches in the, the Groudon, that's a straight away going to be a Solar Blade. But if he doesn't, then maybe I'm catching a Play Rough or a Sacred Sword 
or Behemoth Blade, not every move has been revealed. So having to think which Pokemon's taking this hit is going to be really scary as we just see the time is running down very slow and Neil has to put his moves last second. The Landorus is going to swap out to keep that uh, Intimidate for later. Kartana coming in is going to take these Steel type moves if they do come out a little bit better than the Landorus maybe would have done. Groudon coming in, of course, is going to set up the Sun nice and sunny there and making sure there's less damage coming out from that Kyogre and possibly more damage going out from that Zacian if it does go for a Solar Blade later in the game. Really safe protect here from this Kyogre. You have to assume maybe that there's going to be something like a Solar Blade with a switch in from the Groudon, but at least if you're Kyogre, right, you know Gastron has not come into the game. So you can send in your Kartana, you can let it take a big hit and maybe allow for another Pokemon to kind of switch out, get your Kyogre in and out of this as best as possible. Maybe play a little bit more positionally. This Kartana, though, you know, it's going to still at least be able to do a decent amount of damage. You do not have your Tailwind anymore as that has just run out. So Kartana may just be a Pokemon that you let go down. You maybe switch out your Kyogre bring in something else let your kartana go down and then bring kyogre in right back afterwards you still then have to contend with maybe trying to get a knockout on the opposite side of the field so that there cannot be a weather shift kyogre is going to be really really happy if you can get it in the rain because now with no gastron you have the opportunity to really just click a free water spout or an origin pulse if you need to and that's going to at least i think give you the best opportunity plus getting an intimidate off with this landorus into two physical attackers definitely does not hurt either zashin going for the solar blade this turn is going to at least activate on the single turn, probably targeting right into that Landorus, but it should still most likely get that knockout, I think, just because that Landorus was already under half of its HP, and Zacian is such a strong Pokemon, so... At least at this point, you can send your Kyogre back in, and your Kartana is still free to go for a Leaf Blade in this turn. Get this Groudon even lower in its HP. Does not get the knockout. I think you were fishing for a critical hit there, and that would have been your kind of easier way to kind of secure the end of this game. Because now, at least with Water Spout, you can get enough damage off, I think, but you're still not at a ton of HP thanks to that chip damage coming out from the GYX Wildfires earlier, so you may need to rely on something like an Origin Pulse if you're unsure on how much it's going to do. But, you know, I think it might be close enough that you can maybe just go for that water spout and get that double knockout and then get the one after that but you are now slower than the zashin yeah being slower than the zashin as, as opposed to earlier when it was faster is a bit annoying but you know it is something that players have to respect to get, especially in this case where you had to respect the possible solar blade coming out having to switch pivot around that Zashin protecting and in favor of a, a switch out from the Groudons, preserving that sun, mean that these origin pulses, even if they do hit, are going to be doing less damage. You see, it does come out, does go and does hit into the slot, which is a Charizard, which means that it's going to come straight back in as a Groudon, which means that Chia Chi is going to be another step behind, and that Solar Blade is just a click away from getting uh, getting the win. And it's going to be very nice to see it was such a cool animation, I, I will note, <laughs> getting a possible last knockout of the game if Neil does opt to go for that as a last little knockout move for, to close up this, this first match of the Week 2 of Top 16 of the Victory Road World Cup. Yeah, Neil has piloted Solar Blade Zashin on Rinya Sun far better than I did at NAIC, so I'm happy to see it get the love that I felt it deserved. Uh, I think I think my issue was it was that I did not do. Actually, you know what? I ran this at uh, New Jersey, not NAIC. You know, semantics. But either way, still such a fun and cool move, such an interesting tech to have on those Zashin Groudon teams because there's so much fun that you can have with it. It gives you a really nice option into both the mirror and also into a Kyogre team, and I think it's a really great way that even though he were revealed that tech turn one it didn't matter because then even though you know Chi Chi was playing around it there's still the fact that it ended up saving the game for him and he didn't even need to bring Gastrodon and even though Gastrodon was such a such a big presence both in Dynamax and not in Dynamax I think the fact that you still give yourself that second option and allow you to bring both that Charizard and the Groudon to that matchup I think is really nice because then you can bring those three fire type attackers with Incineroar Charizard Groudon and still have your presence of Zacian without being as afraid of the Kyogre on the opposite side of the field and even still, that Incineroar hanging on in the back for so long with just that one single bit of HP is really nice to just at least kind of toss a Pokemon on the field and say, good job, bud, thank you so much, and then letting that get knocked out and bring something else and allows you to play a really nice amount of positional Pokemon that I think does benefit Rinya Sun as a team in general. So nice to see that team especially, but it's nice to see it with so many different adaptations that I think have kind of made a big impact throughout the entirety of Series 12, both that Weakness Policy Charizard, Solar Blades Off, which I'm gonna I'm still proud of I love that and then also you know the focus sash on the incinerator I think as well a really great way to continue to make changes to 
this team that has six very strong Pokemon. It's such a solid core of Pokemon, but the way that you build the team truly is everything. Yeah, it's one of those teams where, you know, like Big Six was back in 2016, you can change anything on it and it will be a very good team. You know, mostly po players did opt to change what the item was on the Grim style between Iron Ball and Lagging Tail. But, you know, just seeing players thinking world, world championships have happened, so they have every freedom to go with any change they want based on what they saw at Worlds or what they didn't see at Worlds. So it's going to be having a bit of fun and a bit of change there. But we're also going to have a bit of a change of our matches in a second as we do transition over to a little break, and then we'll be right back with some more World Cup content in a couple minutes.